Six success, don't look for failure. This one is more down to the fact that a lot of people limit themselves purely out of the way they think and look at things. Um, I was talking to uh, Jay over the Real Deal channel recently about something that he brought to my eye a while back. And he, like he said, the way I looked at it, he brought it to me to have a look at. I looked at it and said, yeah, go for it. And it worked. And it continues to work. But the point being is with that, it was analyzing it to see that it was an opportunity that could be very, very successful. In the same way, that goes for many things. A lot of people will say something will not work. It's a bit like in the UK. There is no jobs for people. There's often there is no jobs for people. Yet the streets are aren't clean. There's graffiti. There's littering, there's potholes, there's a lot of jobs that simply aren't financially viable anymore. The positive on this is the fact is there is opportunities there. If you can find a way to make it work, there's a way to make it happen. Um, if you choose to just say, well, that's just the way it is, then obviously you're actually stopping yourself from even thinking there is an alternative to what you've already got. Opportunity comes from seeing something not functioning. Opportunity comes from seeing something other people haven't seen or a demand that people want but don't know how to make it work. There is opportunity everywhere. And I do hear people say, well, I can't find a job, I can't do this. And yet I see other people make money out of nothing. I remember... Um, uh, I think his name was Adam, years ago. We used to hang around when I was like probably about 16. Um, he was probably like 20, 20 years old. And he was a carpenter for the council. And although he had a good pension fund and everything else, he just didn't like it. Um, so he started a window cleaning business. And he's got about 10, 15 people working for him now. And it all started from him seeing the fact that there's a lack of window cleaners. And there is. Even now, there's a lack of window cleaners everywhere. There, there is still a lot of opportunities out there, even in old ventures, because a lot of people retire. A lot of people think they're above doing this work. A lot of people um, wouldn't know how to get it started. But the whole point with being switched on to find these opportunities is turning around and saying, right, I've seen the opportunity. How do I make this work? How do I get this to happen? Um, one of the things I would say if you're looking at it from a business perspective is look at the government organizations nearby. You'll, you'll find there is uh, business clubs and associations of this and that. Some of the government sponsored, which means they may also even buy you equipment for a bit of free PR. And the PR works for you and them because they say, look, we're supporting local business. Local business gets a free ad in the newspaper and it works all around. The main thing in, in this is you're setting yourself up for success, not for failure. Failure is when you set yourself up to constantly find the negative and not simply find the solutions. Uh, what I find myself when I deal with large corporations, if I'm being very aggressively um, pushing them to fix something because it's broke, I already have the solutions. I don't go into these meetings and go, you know what, none of this works, sort it out, goodbye. I give them the solutions, and it's up to them whether they want to fix them or not, because a lot of them are nothing to do with me, in the sense that if I find, say, a water filtration plant is not functioning properly because it needs an investment of, say, a quarter of a million pounds, I'm not going to be the guy that comes and fits it. I'm not going to sell them a power plant or whatever filtration plant. I am simply advising them that the inefficiencies of the plant they've got is, firstly, it's past its age. It's, the next thing is its power usage is too much, and quite simply, it's falling apart. My solution is replacing it and giving them a replacement plan where you find that the energy loss um, will actually be worthwhile in the long term, which means they can then go to their clients and say, we need a quarter million pounds, we will actually find that the saving out of the new energy efficiencies plus the, the different types of chemicals or whatever 
will actually pay this off in five years without actually spending any more money. We'll actually recover it over that time period due to advancements in technology. Yada, yada, yada. That is setting yourself up for success because you're not sitting there going, well, it's broke. What do you want me to do about it? It's a case of find the solutions, make it happen, make it work. Anybody can criticize. Factory mentality comes from criticizing. There's always a reason not to do something. But there's many reasons why you should do it. I mean, when I was at RBS, uh, I was talking to somebody who didn't go for a supervisor role. And he said there wasn't enough money in it. And I simply pushed it this way. Well, look at it this way. You're an engineer. You want to go into the management. And the next step for you is to be a supervisor. Even though you're not getting much more money, um, I'm not even going to get into the politics of this, um, but it, the point being is, even if you did this for a year or so, then transfer it to another company, they don't see you as an engineer anymore. You're now a supervisor. And you can ask for more money at the next company, and you'll probably get it. Because in facilities management, you want a pay rise. The fastest way to do that is change companies regularly. Beyond that, it takes forever. You know, they, oh, But yeah, the recognition of people is a bit of a farce. Um, but at the same time, it's something I've pushed for many years. But people at the top, like the guys that really disappeared with millions recently, um, they don't care. And they, they really do not care. Otherwise, they would actually be more concerned about performance than lining their pockets. Um, but yeah, set yourself up for success. Don't, don't see everything as a negative thing. Even doing some menial tasks, sometimes there's benefits to it. Um, there was, over the years, I've been asked to do some things which weren't within my remit. But at the same time, I've earned, learned new skills off it. Doing Excel and everything. I didn't study Excel uh, if, you know, from Microsoft. I, I got into it because I was analyzing paperwork for somebody else, and they asked if I could do the data input. And once I started doing the data input, they were starting to add formula to it. And I said, hang on, what's this doing? And then I learned how to do the formula a bit. And then I progressed and progressed and progressed. And then suddenly, you're an invaluable member of the team that isn't just somebody that does the surveying and stuff, but simply you're building the platforms now. You actually understand how it's all put together. You understand all the management side as well because you're spending all your time with directors. You, you've spent time learning what they're doing. You put yourself through training courses, etc. You've invested in yourself. Set yourself up for success. Thanks for watching.